Hello my friends, thank you for joining me today at the Punlo Coffee Table. I was asked a very odd question. Is God egocentric? Uh, I have to admit it, I was not really prepared for this and at first I even was a little offended by the question. I mean, how, how could you possibly say such a thing? But it is true that many non-Christians use this kind of argument or question to challenge what we believe. Why is it that your God is all about himself. Why is God about God? You know, if he is such a loving God and caring God, why is he about demanding this and demanding that? So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for being so patient with us. Thank you for being patient with us when we ask questions and then helping us to find solutions that are in line with you. You know, that you, you have the truth and you allow us to work through our questions and recognize where that source comes from. Uh, I pray, Lord, that our conversation today honors you. And I pray these, names in your, these things in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Okay, so egocentric. Uh, egocentric is defined as thinking only of oneself with her without regard to the feelings or desires of anyone else. You're self-centered, basically. So that's this, this word. And I don't really like these definitions, I have to admit, but another word that is often used is this ego or egomania. But people like this, that are egocentric, are, well, they, they see the world and the events and other people only from their personal perspective. They are self-benefiting from their perspective. It's all about them. And no one likes these people uh, because they're only about themselves. They, they, they're they no fun to be around. So when God demands worship or God is jealous in the Bible, we often bristle a little bit by that concept. You know, critiques say God only cares about himself. And there are phrases in the Bible like, I am the Lord, or you will know that I am the Lord. And these appear some 2,000 times in the Old Testament alone. Uh, I am your God appears 240 times. So you get the idea. And, and these are the kind of statements that people point to, these demands for worship, these demands for this. And, you know, typically when someone talks about themselves a lot, uh, they're insecure. Uh, they're uh, self-absorbed, or, or maybe both, and God is nothing like this. You know, first, if God was really only about God, then why would we exist at all? People are horrible. I mean, I know I'm horrible. But while we were still sinners, Jesus came and made a way for me and for you so we could have a relationship with him. That doesn't sound like it's all about him. He did this for us. He didn't have to do this. He's God, remember. He can do whatever he wants. He does this because he loves us. But he, he doesn't need us. He's God. Yet he chooses to love us anyway. Even when we reject him, God still loves us. And, and that doesn't really sound very egocentric or self-centered to me. So let's look at the Old Testament just a little bit. We have a story after story in the Old Testament of how God is being patient with people, long suffering, uh, and this is long term, and it's it's used over and over in the Bible. God is God; He can do whatever He wants. Yet He still gives us the opportunity to repent of our wrongdoing, and He waits. That's not very self-centered. He could just kill us. He has the right to do so, but He doesn't. God displays an infinite amount of grace, even when we reject him. Then, of course, there are consequences for, for our rejection. But I think we, we miss these long periods in the Bible where God waits for people to change. He gives them opportunity. He warns them over and over and over again. He sends message after message after message. God just shows great restraint in these stories and that is the very opposite of a self-centered 
egocentric person. Now in the New Testament, Jesus shows us the best way to live. Jesus, God, the creator of everything, serves us. He gives his time freely. He, he shies away from notoriety and he replete, repeatedly tells people after he heals them not to tell anyone. He's not looking for fame. That is not egocentric. It's actually the very, very opposite. Jesus demonstrates this great humility during his life here on earth. So no, no, uh, Jesus is not egocentric. He's not self-centered in any way. But it led me to another question. Can God be egocentric? Well, if anyone can, God can. I mean, what I mean is God made everything. He owns everything. He controls everything. So yes, it's all about God. But by very definition, God can't be self-centered. He is the center of everything because nothing can exist without him. But he chooses not to exhibit that in every situation. So he's not that way purposefully he's that way by definition because he is the center of the universe and I, I could quote a lot of Bible verses to try to prove my point but I think a couple examples from real life are, are a lot better so let me just share a couple that I thought of now first I have kids I have three kids uh, Ayla, Maya, and Zoe and I'm sure if you have kids, you, you understand what I'm going to say. So, when you're a parent, you demand things from your children. I'm sure your parents demanded things from you when you were a child. And I know I often tell my kids, do this or do that. And I expect them to do it, okay? I, I expect them to do this because I'm their parent. I don't demand their obedience because I want it to be about me. I, will, I, I don't do it because I want recognition. I do it because I want them to do what's best for them. It's not because I want to be in charge. It's quite the opposite. I want my children to be safe. I want them to grow up to knowing what is right and what is wrong and preparing them for the world. Their life as young children is centered around me as their parent or around my wife as their parent. But it is not because we are egocentric. It's because we love our kids and we want what is the very, very best for them. Now, how about this? Say you do a project at, at school or at work and you work really hard at it. You spend lots of time. You do spend lots of effort to do the very, very best that you can do on this project. And the question is, do you deserve to be congratulated or rewarded for that effort? Are you being egocentric if you expect to be acknowledged for that effort, all that hard work? I don't think so. I, I, I think you did the work and I think it's natural to expect that you're going to be acknowledged for it. Or, or what about this? Imagine that you invented something amazing. Uh, should you be recognized for this invention? Should you get paid or rewarded for this invention? Well, I think most of us would say yes, okay? I, I think we would all agree that, yeah, it's yours. Why shouldn't you be rewarded? Why shouldn't you be acknowledged? But what if you make this amazing discovery and then you decide not to share it with the world? Now, it, it's your prerogative. Uh, it's your invention, right? So you have control over it because it's yours, because it's your invention. And what about this last one? And I, What about if you're cooking a meal and you cook this amazing meal? You spend money to get all the ingredients. You spend hours and hours preparing the food. Do you desire to be praised for your efforts? Well, probably. I mean, it's your hard work. Of course, you're expecting to be the center of attention at that meal that you've just spent all that time preparing. I mean, none of those examples make you egocentric. 
these examples are all about times when your position or your efforts make you feel like you should be the center of attention and rightfully so you can rightfully demand to be the center of attention in those circumstances yet that does not make you egocentric or self-centered not at all you have a right because it's yours right i mean th that comes with ownership um, so what about god god created everything uh, god owns everything and that includes us okay god can actually do whatever he wants with his stuff it's his creation that includes us it's actually impossible for the maker of something to be egocentric over what he has created they are in control of the creation the creation is not well the creation is subject to them the creator so yes god has a right to do whatever he wants to do with his creation and that's not egocentric at all that's just ownership i mean i i, I like this idea that i love my dog i i have a dog i own a dog i demand obedience from my dog i expect my dog to do whatever i tell it to do why because it's my dog i have the right for that dog to do whatever i tell it to because i own the dog that's not egocentric it's ownership let's pray heavenly father thank you for being so patient with all of us especially with me thank you for allowing us to ask questions and then lead us to solutions so that we can see the truth the truth that is only found in you help us to rely on you to trust in you so that we can live the life that you wish us to live which is the best life we could possibly live and i pray these things in your name lord jesus amen okay let me leave you with this so when we create when we own what we create uh, we think we deserve to be honored we think we deserve to be the center of attention around that we have kids they are our kids we want what's best for them we want them to obey us and do what we tell them to do to stay focused on us because we know what is best for them so how much more god uh, god created everything he created everyone god wants what is best for us so obviously god wants us to stay focused on him god has every right to demand that we stay so centered on him everything should center around him because he is the center of everything but god still allows us to choose god still is patient when we fail and i know i fail god sacrificed to make a way so that i could have a relationship with him i could be close to him now that doesn't sound very self-centered to me so thank you for joining me today at the Punlo Coffee Table. And if you like this message, please share a link with one of your friends. Uh, if you have any comments for me, you can email me. My email should be on the screen. So until next time, from the Punlo Coffee Table, God bless.